What's up YouTube, MDEX Music here, and thanks for joining us for another season of our acclaimed series, Upper Structure Fridays. This season, we're gonna talk about chordals as upper structures. Season one is dedicated to upper structure triads. It is crucial that you understand the concepts we used to create season one. So, if you haven't done so already, I strongly encourage you to get volume one. At least watch the intro to that season. I'll put a link in the description below, or you can click on this iCard. Okay, so assuming we're all on the same page with upper structures, let's talk about chordals. Most players think chordals are used only in chordal music, where you build chords by stacking fourths instead of thirds, or in modal music. But in this series, we're gonna concentrate on the use of chordals as upper structures over standard chord progressions, such as two five ones. So what are chordals? For our purposes, we're only gonna think of three note chordals. So every time I'm using the term chordal, I will be referring to those three note structures. So to make a chordal, we take any note and then we stack two more notes using fourths. So let's take the note C for example, and then stack a perfect fourth above C. That'll give us an F. So now we have a perfect fourth. And if I stack another perfect fourth on top of that, a perfect fourth from F, I'll get B flat. So here I have a chordal. And we're gonna classify it as a perfect chordal moving forward because it's built using nothing but perfect fourths. As with thirds, there are two kinds of fourths, the perfect fourth and the augmented fourth. Notice that although theoretically, we could have a diminished fourth, that is C to F flat, the sound it produces is that of a major third, C to E. So now we have two kinds of fourths we may use to create different kinds of chordals. A perfect fourth plus another perfect fourth equals a perfect chordal. C, F, B flat. And we'll use the notation C47 to represent it. A perfect fourth plus an augmented fourth equals an altered chordal. C, F, and B natural. And we notate it C major 7, 4. An augmented fourth plus a perfect fourth also equals an altered chordal. C, F sharp, B natural. Notated as C major 7, sharp four. And our last option would be an augmented fourth plus another augmented fourth. In this case, we get C, F sharp, and C again, which does not give us three different notes, but rather two. This is not a chordal. It is merely a dyad. So we only have three kinds of chordals. The perfect chordal, four, seven. The altered chordal, major seven, four and the altered chordal major seven sharp four. So just a brief note on this notation. While it's not standard in the typical musical lexicon, these are the symbols we're going to use moving forward because they very clearly represent the chordals that we're talking about. Had we used the notation C7 sus four, we would have implied the notes C, F, G, B flat. We could have changed it to C sus four omit five or C sus four no fifth, but they're too long to use in charts and really hard to read at a glance. C four seven is clear. And since it is not found anywhere else, it is clearly understood that it represents just the three notes C, F and B flat. Same with the altered chordals. As soon as you see C major 7, 4, you'll know it represents only the three notes C, F, and B. F is the 4, and B the major 7. C major 7 sharp 4 is just C, F sharp, and B. A progression with chordals will look like this. So get used to this notation. It's fairly simple, and there's only three types. The C, 4, 7, the C major seven four, and then the C major seven sharp four. You'll notice the perfect chordals always have a flat seventh, and the altered chordals always have 
a major seventh, with the only difference being how far apart that interior note is from the root, either a perfect fourth or an augmented fourth or a tritone. Okay, so let's look at some examples of some upper structure chordals. These are things you will definitely see this season coming up. We'll do all of our examples on top of a C7. So let's start with a couple of perfect chordals. Like if you see, for example, D4-7 over C7, you're merely going to play this, a D, a G, and a C. That's our chordal on top of the C7. And this is the sound you get. Or if you see E4-7 on top of or over C7, you're just going to play this, E, A, and D on top of the same C7 that we had before. And then our altered chordals. For example, what if we have a B flat major seven sharp four? That's gonna sound like this. So now I have a B flat, an E, and an A. Since many players are not used to playing chordals, we will give you a few exercises to familiarize yourself with them outside of the upper structure concept. Your first challenge is to play the perfect chordals four seven in all 12 keys moving the roots by half step in root position. Next, we will play the same perfect chordals 4-7, but over two octaves, and I will explain why in just a moment. Okay, so now that you've played them in two octaves, what you've also done is outlined all the possible inversions of our chordal. Yes, that's right, chordals also have inversions. So C4-7 in root position is C, F, B flat. In first inversion, it's F, B flat, and C. And in second inversion, it's B flat, C, and F. So I know what you're probably thinking right now, but that's just a sus2 or a sus4 chord. Yes, they are, but we want to see them as inversions of chordals, exactly as we see inversions of triads. C root, first inversion, second inversion. They're all a C triad to you, aren't they? Well, that's how I want you to look at these inversions as well. C4-7 root, first inversion, and second inversion. This will become very handy later on when we start looking at chordals as upper structures, trust me. So our next exercise is to play them in all inversions in all 12 keys. Here's the killer exercise. Play each inversion in all 12 keys. I'm sure some of you know chordals very well but I'm willing to bet you probably didn't practice them in the same way that you practiced triads. So definitely look at these exercises and know your perfect chordals left and right, upside down, forwards and backwards. It'll definitely help with the season moving forward. We've created three companion videos, each that will walk you through the entire challenge for the three types of chordals we've talked about today. I'll put a link in the description down below. Now we can use the same chord chord scale pairing concept we used in volume one with triads and apply it using chordals. So in this season, we will take a look at upper structure chordals, how to use them, why they work, and how to create new colors in music for piano comping and improvisation. By the end of the course, you will know all upper structure chordals over the different types of chords and functions. So be sure to come back every week for a new episode of Upper Structure Fridays Season 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll leave you today with our demo using Upper Structure Chordals throughout an entire song.